In this lesson, let's look at another kinematic equation. We'll call it the velocity kinematic equation. There it is right there with everything labeled for what each, uh, each variable actually is. Um, and what you'll notice is that it's the final velocity squared there. If, if you remember back to the car idea, accelerating two meters per second, that means uh, two meters per second squared means we're gaining two meters per second every second. There was this interesting relationship that happened. The velocity went up consistently just by two, but the displacement started out small and grew and grew and grew. If we were in fact to graph that with velocity on the y-axis and displacement on the x-axis, we would end up with a square root curve, actually graphing out what you see down here happening with the car there, we would end up with a square root curve. Um, so in other words, a V equals something square root of displacement. Uh, if we square both sides, then we end up with a V squared equals something times the displacement without the square root. Now that's where that equation comes from. If we have time, we'll discuss the graph and how it actually derives that equation in class a little bit. But one way or another, the point of emphasis for this lesson is being able to use this kinematic equation to solve problems. All right, so let's work a couple of example problems. First, this x-axis problem here. I've got a car traveling at 26 meters per second. As you're doing these, it's always good to underline and then label what it is, so it's already traveling at 26 meters per second. That's my initial velocity, u. Slams on brakes to stop because a deer stepped out in the road. Now, this term right here, to stop, tells me what my final velocity is, v equals zero. Calculate the car's needed deceleration. That means I'm solving for a, a equals question mark, if it must stop and there's a displacement. So I draw a labeled picture like I did here, and I make a variable bank. And then I rewrite my equation over here. I chose the velocity kinematic, not just because that's the lesson that we're working on right now, but notice that I have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement. That lines up perfectly with my velocity kinematic here. Another way to recognize, I know nothing about time. This is an accelerating object, or in this case, a decelerating object, and I know, know nothing about time. And the velocity kinematic is the one that is missing time. So I rewrite the equation, and now I'm going to substitute in. Now always be careful with what your final initial velocity is. Here I'm trying to stop, meaning my final is going to be zero, and I was already going some speed, 26 meters per second, some velocity 26 meters per second. I'm decelerating. I'm expecting my answer here to turn out to be negative. So let's go ahead and let's start working the algebra. 26 squared is 676, just going ahead and working through, and then 2 times 73 is 146. So I've got this here times A. The very next step, I need to subtract the 676 to the other side leaving me 676 equals, excuse me, negative 676, that's a big deal there, must have that negative sign on it, equals 146 times A. Last algebraic step, divide both sides by 146, so it cancels out, right, 146. That gives me a deceleration of negative 4.6 meters per second squared. All right, let's look at a y-axis problem now. And the y-axis problem sometimes students get very confused on because not many variables have to be given here just simply because it's in, just in the y-axis. So here, number two, a ball is thrown upwards at 16 meters per second. Calculate its maximum height. Now, before we even get started, we draw a picture over here, label it, but there are two variables that we weren't told in the problem that we already know. We know the acceleration of this ball. A equals negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Just because the ball is going up with an initial velocity does not mean that there isn't gravity. Gravity is what is actually causing it to decelerate and slow down. The other variable that we know is the final velocity. See, whenever you're at the maximum height, your final velocity, your velocity at max height is zero. That's something that you need to write down in your notes there. Velocity at max height, y-axis problems, is always zero meters per second. Now I know everything that I need to to make my variable bank. So I'm going to solve for the displacement whenever the velocity, the final velocity is zero, aka maximum height. So how far up do I have to go to get to maximum height velocity of zero? I don't have time again, so the velocity kinematic works perfect here. 
So I rewrite my equation, and then I substitute in, and then I start working my algebra. All right, my first algebraic step after I simplified on that line, just doing 16 squared and 2 times negative 9.81, I need to subtract the 256 to the other side. And lastly, I need to divide my negative 19.62 over here. And so I end up with a maximum height displacement of 13 meters positive because we're going upwards there, negative divided by a negative. That's what gave me that, what I expected, positive displacement, what it should have been. Now, in both of these example problems, we used a final velocity of zero. Do not think that that always is the case. I purposefully chose these two example problems because they're ones that students tend to trip up a little bit more on. Uh, but the velocity kinematic can be used in any situation where you know, where you, where, where you know or are looking for final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, displacement, aka you don't know time, and uh, it's an accelerating object.